we need a glass vessel in the shape of a cylinder. Look, the egg looks just like a balloon. Oh, and this refraction of light? Okay, let's be serious. Let's put this plastic plate on top, toilet paper tube, and the egg on top. Now knock it over and the egg falls exactly into it. Now three eggs. How about five? Easy? All five eggs fall right in the water. This time we will use boiled eggs, hard boiled and peeled from the shell. Boil your water in a kettle. Be careful with the boiling water. Pour it into a bottle. And when it heats up, pour it into a bowl. Now, let's put the egg on top of the neck and just watch the wonders of physics. The egg literally pulls in. Did you hear that? Let's look again from the close angle. The egg goes in the bottle. The same trick can be done with the burning piece of paper. The fire will burn all the oxygen inside and the egg will be drawn inside even faster. For the next experiment, I got this aquarium. How's the view? Fill the aquarium with water almost to the edge. And now, we break the raw egg inside. It immediately goes to the bottom, but it's not as simple as that. Using our fingers, we create a funnel in the water and the white egg makes it visible. Just look, it's a real egg tornado. And in the center of the storm, of course, is the yolk, which does not even think of spreading unlike egg white, which particles have already spread throughout the aquarium. For the next experiment, we'll need an empty shell, but first, I'll show you how to make it. To begin with, you will need two small holes on opposite side of the egg. Now, let's take a plastic bottle and make a hole in the bottom. Fill it with water, which immediately begins to flow through the hole. But for now, we'll plug it with the finger. We fix the prepared egg on the neck of the bottom of the clay. And now, you remove the finger from the bottom of the bottle and watch how the pressure will put out the entire contents of the egg, like this. Rinse the shell in water, and to remove the remaining moisture, blow into one of the holes. Now, put the shell in a glass container filled with vinegar. Under its influence, Calcium, which the most part of the shell consists of, dissolves. However, the inner membrane will remain intact. After one or two days, we will remove the membrane from the vinegar. Rinse it thoroughly to get rid of the precipitation. Now, dry with the hair dryer to remove all excess moisture. Inflate the membrane so that it returns to its original egg shape. And just look! Now we have a rubber egg. It is elastic and it bounces well off surfaces, just like a real ball. In this experiment, we're working with chemicals, so let's not forget about our protective equipment. Let's take an empty egg, as in the last experiment, as well as alkaline pipe cleaner, water, and aluminum. We dissolve the alkali in the water and add aluminum to start the chemical reaction. When the hydrogen vapor starts coming out of the neck of the bottle, we will plug it with our empty egg so that they accumulate inside the shell. Now, we will install the shell on a stand and ignite it with the gas that comes out through the hole. But do not repeat such experiment at home. It's very dangerous. Meanwhile, our shell explodes. Look, let's look at that again in slow motion. Wow, what a powerful explosion. Don't try this at home. Well, at the end, we will conduct a small crash test of an ordinary chicken egg. We will fix the egg on two coils of duct tape and gradually put barbells weighing 3.2 kilograms on top. Let's see how much of that it can withstand. 3 kilograms, 6 kilograms, 9 kilograms, wow! I didn't think it could withstand so much! 
12.8 kilograms. Meanwhile, the weight is as much as 16 kilograms. Nineteen kilograms turned out to be an unbearable burden for our egg. It turns out the maximum load that an egg can withstand is somewhere between sixteen and nineteen kilograms. Through the tube, we pump both balloons. One bigger than the other. Fix the dispensers in the non-venting position. Now, let's combine the balls into one by connecting the two. Let's open the way for the air and see what happens. The bigger balloon takes the air out of the smaller one. Admit it, you're surprised too. When repeating the experiment, the result is the same. The bigger ball will always only grow and the smaller one will always deflate. Now, we need a fresh orange peel from which citrus oils can still be squeezed out. Let's sprinkle these oils on a well-inflated balloon and see what happens. The balloon burst! Wow! Let's take a needle and let's pierce the first balloon. And now the second one. The balloon still burst with the delay, so what is the secret? It's all about the usual tape. Cut off a small piece of tape and stick it to the surface of the balloon. Now, after the puncture, just for a while the tape protects the balloon from the bursting. And now let's do it again. We pierce the ball, wait a little bit more than a second, boom! Now, we have a spore with the sharp nail on the table. Hit it with the balloon and BAM! But what if there are a lot of nails? No matter how much we knock the balloons on the nails, it does not burst. You can even just press it against them. Or even put a board on top and lean it on it with your whole body. It just doesn't care. Here, the pressure was too much. Let's take the neck of a bottle and glue it to the CD with a glue gun. Now, pull a well-inflated balloon over the neck. We fix everything tightly and release the structure. It begins to slide on the surface of the table. And with a little slight push, you can set any direction until the balloon runs out of air. Incredible, isn't it? This time, a little magic. We will show you little telekinetic abilities. The balloon inside the bottle will deflate at my command as soon as I squeeze my hand. It seems like I'm squeezing it. Do you want to know what the secret is? To begin with, put the balloon in the bottle and pull it over its neck. Now, let's make a small hole in the bottom. Inflate the balloon, covering the hole with your finger. And once you release the hole, the ball will immediately begin to deflate. What a trick! And here's another trick for you. Watch out for that air bubble. I'm going to grab it and now put it back in place with a little light movement. Not impressed? What if I eat it? Even after that, I can put it back. You think it's in your hands? I can just spit it out. Well. Now, I'll show you what the secret is. Take the long balloon and stretch it well in two places. Now, let's add some air. Spin the ball. Now, if we click on this air bubble, it will immediately move to the middle and then back again. That's the whole secret. And here's an incredible new trick. Now, I'm going to swallow this balloon. Don't you believe me? Just watch. The main thing to do, everything is smoothly and let the balloon disappear in my mouth. Well, there are no problems with the remaining tail. What? Mmm, it's delicious. Do you want to know how I did it? To begin with, pump the balloon, leaving a small tail. Tie it. And make a small hole 
And that's the whole secret. If it seems to you that the air does not weigh anything, the balloon will help me demonstrate the opposite. Take a suspended stick and attach two identical balloons on both ends of it. Loosen the fastening one of them as the air gradually leaves it. Now, you can observe how our improvised scales are gradually leaning towards a more inflated balloon, which means that the air still weighs something. For the next experiment, we will need a dry pipe cleaner, water, and aluminum. We're conducting this experiment outdoors to avoid inhaling dangerous fumes. We put a balloon on the neck of the flask and with the beginning of the chemical reaction, it will quickly begin to fill with gas. Let's tie the balloon, which is lighter than air. Let's fill a few more balloons and move on to the key part of our experiment. 